1975, the spy thriller Three Days of the Condor, starring Robert Redford and Faye Dunaway, captivated America. Now New York Times bestselling author and screenwriter James Grady once again visits his favorite spy in his newest book, Last Days of the Condor. Good morning, James. Good morning. Now, it's been, what, 40 years since we first met Condor in the debut novel? Yes, so when you, exactly 40 years. Okay, so when you wrote that first book, tell me a little bit about what it was about Condor's character that captivated you. Well, when I started to write the book, what I wanted to do was tell a story of every guy. The, the era was full of spies and detectives who were all like James Bond superheroes. To me, while I loved them, I wanted to, to write a story of, that I could relate to, that everybody could relate to, that showed what would happen to a guy just like us. And that's where Condor came from. So how has your relationship with Condor changed over the years? As he's gotten more sophisticated, mature, and experienced, coincidentally, so have I. We both have, I think, <laughs> seen the world not just grow, but change rapidly and dramatically. Uh, you, you have the end of the Cold War, you have 9-11, you have the rise of big data. And in this crazy new world, I wanted to drop Condor into an environment where essentially spies are all around us, and that's what Last Days of the Condor is all about. Right. So now with the original novel, when the film rights were first sold to that book, did you have any idea that this would become the phenomenon that it did? I had not only did I have no idea, I didn't even think they'd get it onto the big screen. It just, the whole thing took on such a surreal atmosphere. And it, as they were filming, the, the screenwriters kept revising because the headlines were breaking news. Mm -hmm. about the Central Intelligence Agency and Watergate that, that they knew was going to affect their movie. And they were really the first post-Watergate movie to come out there uh, and, and deal with, with the reality of, of a new America. And that phenomenon, I guess, hasn't really changed much because now we're 40 years later, but you're still trying to capture, capture that modern audience with breaking headlines, right? Absolutely. And it's, it's, more, it's, it's, it's more than I don't just want to capture the breaking headlines. I want to go to the forces behind them. And to me, it's, it's, it's not as important what happened on Tuesday or what happened on Thursday. It's why and how. Those are the things I try and deal with in Last Days of Condor, and really pretty much all my fiction. And I try to deal with it you know, in this crazy world that we've got out there now. Now, since this is, you know, it's been 40 years, you're probably getting new, meeting new readers all the time. Now, what, how, what are you doing that you think that will help capture those new readers if this is the first time they've met him in this new book? Well, one of the things that I do is I don't just rely on my standard, iconic, 60s hero, Condor, to tell the story. I use alternating visions between him and the 30 -ish CIA top woman agent who swept up into his arena. That allows me to show both the, the seasoned historical perspective, if you will, and the cutting edge generation now taking a look at that and throwing them both into the same problems. And it's funny that my two, my two main characters, Condor and the woman, say, come at the world in completely different ways and with completely different solutions. So I, I use this as a, a bridge in, from today into tomorrow. Now, in this latest adventure, Last Days of the Condor, uh, you've really crafted the story that shows a very modern picture of what today's spies are going through. Condor is literally on the run from everybody, including the NSA. So how did you go about doing your research for this novel? My, my research comes both organically and in, in, in what would I do if situations. Mm -hmm. But I live in Washington, and I've been a reporter in Washington pretty consistently off and on for 40 years. And my beat has not coincidentally, often been intelligence and, and the <laughs> noir streets, crime. So I kept, I, I've kept my ear to the ground and my eyes open, and I still have people who tell me things. And suddenly all of that began to coalesce into a vision of the world, a vision of what could be, a vision of where we're headed tomorrow. And I wanted to, to come at that in a way that was accessible both to new readers and, and to you know, some of my, my fans who've been around for a while. So Condor seemed the perfect vehicle. Condor has really become the father of the spy thriller. Now, not, now that that thriller genre is one of the most popular probably in the world, it's no wonder that with the rise of terrorism, NSA surveillance, ISIS, the recent attacks in Paris, how, how do you feel that these events are affecting 
uh, not only Condor, but modern-day spies in general. Well, you know, it, 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 I hate to say it was easier in the old days, but it's easier to spy on Russia than it is ISIS because borders. Mm-hmm. And you, you could, you know, the, the new world that we're in has changed not just how we go about spying, but to some degree when, where, and why. So it's, uh, I'm watching the, our, 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 our essentially pretty good intelligence agency have to respond to a new dynamic that nobody predicted, and even five years ago. So now, what do you think is, will be next for Condor after this with all of the changes that we're seeing? Well, I think the, both the rise of, of what they call it asymmetrical warfare. It's the, the rise of uh, groups like ISIS, the rise of big data in the hands of anybody who can get the right laptop. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think those are the issues that are going to be confronted, not just by Condor, but by all of us out here in the streets. As a journalist, are you, in reporting these types of stories and having your ear to the ground, as you said, talking to these people that are in the know, do you find that the stories are scary to you? And then as you're translating them into fiction, that you're kind of, are, there, are there moments that you actually scare yourself as far as this could actually happen? It, it can be really frightening to be talking to somebody about what you perceive as a fictional situation and to have him say, oh, yeah, we, you know, we could have done that last year. I mean, that's, that's really a scary thing. Yeah. Well, James, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. I, we wish you all the best with the success of Last Days of the Condor. This, the book is now in stores and available online for download, correct? That's right, and I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Okay, so if you're interested in the book, go check him out at jamesgrady.net. James, thanks again for joining us, and we wish you all the best. Thank you again. You bet. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.